So, 800 subs, not bad, not bad at all. As part of that um, beeping up to 800, I put a little hole on my site to say, okay, what would you guys like to see? And somebody said oh, they would like to see quite a wish list, Dragon Bane setup, a bit of land setup, and basin setup from not quite first principles, but basically from from scratch. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a start today. I don't have time for all of them, I'm afraid, but I'm going to have a look at, at Vason with you. So this is current setup uh, on my local version 10. Setup version 11 will be slightly different. It will look a bit different, but the principles will be the same. So I'm going to show you this one here. So uh, let me go and uh, return to setup. This is running on a little Raspberry Pi here on my desk. And I'll just create a new world. So... We're going to call it Raisin Setup. Same game system, you choose it. Uh, of course, you will have to download it first. Let me show you briefly where to do that. And the rest is optional. So you can just say Create World. If you don't have the game system yet, yeah, go to Install System. Enter up here, Raisin. And then you see the official base. Mine uh, currently shows version 3.1.5. Yeah, and that if you haven't installed it yet, you get the option to install it from here. So you click here. And version 11 it looks slightly different, but as I said, if that's something you need help with, let me know. Um, so I've created the world now. Um, there are also some add-on mod modules, of course. So if you again go to the add-on mod modules and you want to install a new one, and you just search for Vason. You have to have bought these modules. They're premium modules um, that I have. And you can see I've got them all and I've got them all installed. There's Wicked Secret and other mysteries, Seasons of Mystery, Mythic Britain and Ireland, the official core rulebook. I'm just going to show the core rulebook at this point, um, which hopefully is going to be what you're after. If not, again, let me know. And I'll happily do a little add-on. So, if you have those installed in the background, you can now go into your world. Where is it? Raise and set up. Launch it. And this will be pretty much an empty world at this point. When you first come in, there's no password set. You can set these later. So next steps, you get the little um, prompts here send from Foundry, inviting your players getting started. Definitely recommend you look through them if you're new to Foundry entirely. Um, and that's basically what you end up with. So at this point, I have the system installed, but not the content module. The system allows you already, if I go to characters, create a character. Uh, go to test. And then you get the character sheet here. And you could actually play with this. Absolutely fine, you can do it. You just have to create all the gears and the talents and all that stuff yourself. But you can play like this. And I have actually set this up entirely myself, first on Fantasy Grounds and then on, uh, on Foundry before the official systems come came out. So it's possible, it just takes time. Um, time I'd much rather spend on playing rather than keying in data. That's why I was very happy to pay that money. Um, so if you have the module, and I recommend you do get it if you're serious about playing this, uh, you go to Manage Modules here, you find the module, Official code rulebook, pick it, and you save your module settings. Double reload. Takes a moment. Remember, this is on a relatively slow machine, but you get this here. Welcome splash screen. Back up and save your world before importing. Yeah, well, I haven't done anything, so I can skip that. And this is a list, a sort of a packaging list of what's included. So I'm going to import that. David Rogers wrote it. Yeah. Originally perfect wrote it, but uh, David Rogers took it over. And then you get this welcome screen. Read it. Absolutely read it. Because so many questions I see on the Discord are actually answered in here. So for example, it tells you how to do this. So what's in it, chapters, how does how's it organized, how to use it, how to show it to players, how to show artwork to players, where you can find the tokens. Yeah, how to roll a D66. There's a, a macro down here that has been installed, D66. So click on that tiny little folder there. And then you can drag it out here. And whenever you need to roll a D66, you just hit that. And there you go. Um, the D66 is not actually showing directly. That's interesting. It just shows a 5 and a 1. 
Interesting. That should work. The manual formula would be, as it says, roll 1d6 uh, times 10. That's for the tens. Plus 1d6. Should give you a number. That's because it just counts successes. But you can still read it. 3 and 5, 5 and 1, you can read it. You just have to click on it. So, I just closed the intro. I wasn't quite done with it yet. Usual professionalism. If you ever need to get back to this, you go to your uh, journal entries and go to Vason Core Rules Welcome. So that's where you can always find it again once you close it. If you were too hasty, for example, like me, and you closed it too quickly. So read it through. Recommended modules. A couple of modules that I um, recommended. There are a couple more I would add, but dice are nice mix. The dice look pretty, like the Vason dice. And here, zero engine combat allows you to use the car based initiative. And I, I get to it at the end. I will also show you how to use the right cards, so the Vason cards, rather than the other ones. So once you've read that, you can explore. Basically, you, you now get characters here. You get the, the included ones from the core game. You get the animals in it. There's no artwork, but at least there's a, a token here with a, with a name of it in it. And token. Move it somewhere bright. It's got the Ouroboros around it. It's got the frame of the uh, the snake, essentially, or the dragon chasing its own tail, um, which is a recurrent system symbol. You've got headquarters management, so there's a character sheet here, essentially, for your headquarters, for your base. You get initiative tokens. You get NPC templates. So, for example, typical hunter. What does that look like? Yeah, this is an NPC, or so it's a slightly abbreviated thing. Interestingly enough, there's no equipment on these. Okay, probably exactly like they're in the book. You get the Dance of Dreams, which is the introductory um, uh, adventure. And here you have the gear. So you can, from the gear, share to the chat, for example, by clicking on the bubble. You can edit it here. Yeah, and... The other things you can just roll by clicking on it. So agility will be physique plus agility. So it's three dice and you can see it just comes through. There's no 3D dice because I haven't activated dice so nice. Just wanted to show you what it looks like vanilla. Um, you also get in here uh, the scenes. So you get a nice big map. If you want to navigate it, you have to right click and view scene. That's normally an add-on I, I use to avoid that. It's a really good resolution uh, version of the map. You can go quite far in before it starts breaking up a little bit. And on here are also map pins, the locations. So for example, for Uppsala, uh, you've got the map pin, but it doesn't link to anything. So you have items, all the ones you need. Yeah, items of power, what's a bio, whatever. Equipment, Aquavit, with nice tokens on it the effect configured. So all of this is available to you. And um, believe me, you can enter it, but it's a lot of work. I think I said that once or twice. You get to the um, rules. So if you go to introduction, for example, chapter by chapter, it's rendered like the book with the artwork in it. And if you ever want to share this artwork, you can click on it and then use the show place here at the top. Yeah, um, this book, so it's nicely done. And done by chapter so you can find things a bit quicker. You could, in theory, put all of this into one book and have them all on the side. A uh, little tip while you're in, if you're new to Foundry, there's this little icon up here, looks like a post it notes. Um, that basically, you have to click to one page and then you have to click to the next one. If you don't want to do that, just click on it. So it's two post it notes, and basically, that just keeps scrolling through the whole journal. So you can just keep going. That's what that one does. Right. So, what else do you get? You get a couple of uh, rollable tables and not so many, but you have the background tables in here. So when you create a new character, you can use this. I'm not quite sure how he's implemented that, to be honest. Um, I did my own thing there. Mystery tables you can as well get. So what's the main conflict of your mystery? You and roll all this and basically compile a story from that. These are tables from the book. So, you get the Vason Initiative deck. If you look at this one, it is a relatively simple one. Doesn't quite look like the one. Um, 
in I'm actually draw a card. Ah, I can't. Um, not quite the same as the printed one, but it is nice looking. You can use it directly like it is. What it does not come with is the soundtrack. Yeah, so if you were a Kickstart uh, backer at some point, you could actually get the soundtrack for it. Uh, it's available on Spotify and Deezer and Apple Music, etc. You can listen to it, but it's not integrated. And yeah, that's it. So, next thing's next. Um, the modules I would enable. I go to my module list, manage modules, and these are currently the ones I've got installed here. I'm not going to enable them all. I typically would go for background list pins. That still works, but you see how, how Uppsala basically has got this, this frame around it. Uh, if you don't want that, you can basically, I think it's a functionality these days. Go there, double right click. No, it's not, it's not core. So if you have this background as pins, you can make that uh, background disappear and you just see the white. can make it hard to see on some maps, but uh, I quite like it. I would include at this point as well version 10 only scene enhancement. doesn't work in version 11, but basically that allows you to change the scene just by left clicking on it. Okay, so nice, definitely would include that. The Dragon Bane, no, no, we're the wrong game. Um, don't need that, don't need that. FX Master I would definitely include. As you can have some nice like, clouds and fog and things like that. Um, GM screen I'll leave off for now. I like it, but it's not essential these days. Um, don't need, don't need, don't need. I like narrator, uh, narrator tools. Can show you that as well. Ownership viewer definitely I would recommend. I will also still use Pincushion, which has got some dependencies. Pop out I use. Um, quick insert I use. Uh, Simple calendar. It's nice to have a calendar in game. You can also use small time to show the display of the time on the background. And I would definitely include tidy UI. Actually, it's not so important anymore since latest, but I still do. And um, year zero combat. So let's save these. Reload for a moment. And then you can see some things running through, and you get your 3D dice settings here. Click on that once. You can now see that there's the D6 for Vason. So if I now go to my character sheet and roll for logic, I get 3D dice. Look at that. And they look like the actual official Vason dice, which I just had in my hand the other day. I think it's still here. Aha. Sure, they can see that. That's the die. So, that's one thing. What else did the other modules do? Let me have another look at them. Active, so I've got 15 of them. Now, ownership viewer. Actually, first things, things first. Let's go back to the map for a moment. So if you now go to Uppsala, it still has its background. That's strange. <laughs> okay, when I place my own pins, it should work. Let's see. Create a map pen. There's, there's a pin. I did this, by the way, on the left-hand side. You have to go to bookmarks, and then you can double-click on the on the canvas. I have one. So I'm going to give it. I just our background table. Doesn't matter. I would point to a journal entry. Um, I save it. And now you can see that this icon down here in the corner left has got no background on it. Yeah, and I have the option um, to have it with background or without background here. Show background or not? No background. I ah, didn't do it, did it? But that should—that's basically what it should do. But um, nice and nice. I've shown you FX Master. You get on the side here this this magic wand, and if you click on it, you get this extra control here. For example, you could have um, weather. You could have clouds running. You should just save changes. Takes a moment to come through. You can also uh, unfurl this folder open, and you'll see all the different settings for it. What should happen? This, as I said, can take a moment. Is that you get a cloud layer moving? So that's quite pretty. 
Um, same with fog. You can do fog or you can do rain um, that goes across the screen or falls from you down. Yeah, so top down, for example. So let's save the changes. Something there. I can see some raindrops. Hard to make out on this map. Okay. Now that's um, again. I'm not quite sure why it's not refreshing the canvas here. But the clouds. Yeah. Now we get them. You see the clouds? Clouds moving. Yeah. I really like that effect. So, what was next? Um, things I include and why I include them. Lip wrapper is just uh, something that allows you to install the other modules. It feeds the modules, basically offers a library of functionality to them. Narrator tools. I quite like that because, let me minimize this, you can always double click on the title bar to minimize something. Um, if I have a, a something here from Lands of Dreams, and I want to show the players, a part of it, like Prelude. There's a bit of text here I want to be, for them to be able to read along as I tell them or summarize it. Right click on it, and you get two options. You can describe or narrate. I'll go for narrate just to show it. Describe basically puts it in the chat, but narrate will also put it here on the screen for them to read a bit bigger. And it runs through. And what I would love to see is somebody doing the, the Star Wars scroll pattern. Yeah, but you can basically get this here. I like. You can pause it, otherwise it runs through and then disappears. Also, however, it puts a different sort of colored backgrounded version here in the chat and players can refer back to it. Quite a useful little tool. Um, that's all it does, basically. Then we've got Ownership Viewer. Now, if I have a lot of um, information here on the side, for example, I want to make items available to my players, let's say, Want to do armor, and the players are supposed to be able to pick their own armor. I can say configure ownership and say their observer. Right. Normally, when I do this, there's no visual feedback of whether something is shared or not. Now, with this ownership viewer, you get these little icons here, and different uh, types of sharing have different symbols. So you can say, okay, this is shared with everybody, this is owned by everybody, this is uh, visible by some, but not everybody. Then you get that layer color here next to it. So very, very useful to just see, have I shared that? Did I want to share that? Little um, um, of advice, if you right click here, configure ownership and say everybody can see everything. Unless they've changed it in version 11, it does not propagate. It only ever goes down to one layer. So it shared the folders essentially, but there was nothing to share in it, not the subfolders. That's what I'm saying. You have to do this once for each subfolder. There are some clever macros you can get that do this, but um, it's not too hard. I'm quite selective for what I share anyway. But the ownership viewer basically allows me to keep track of that. In cushion just allows you to um, modify the behavior of these um, things. So if I double right click on the FS of our journal notes functionality, double right click on it, I can open it. You can then see that there are more options than there were before um, in Cushion. Yeah, I can then say, okay, I want to have a tooltip on it. And I want to show text previews on it. Update map note. Let's see whether this works. It should happen. And I might have to refresh it. We're just going somewhere else and coming back. Okay, it doesn't quite happen yet, but what normally happens if you configure it, right, is you then get a little flyout um, that tells you, that gives you a little sort of, ah, there you go, that gives you the context for it. So if you have a lot of things on a map and you want to quickly remind yourself what's in it, you can uh, include this. You have to take off the, the tick because by default it doesn't show this. And then you can basically read off uh, the descriptions without having to open a journal. Very useful. So next one I use is Popout. Well, Popout, I think everybody uses that. And if they don't, it's probably because I don't know about it. Um, so if I have my character sheet, for example, I've got that here and I've got something else over there and I've got something else over there and something else over there. The screen can get very, very crowded. I can't push this one off the window, as you can see. If you click Popout, 
What I will do is basically create a sub-browser window, which I can push anywhere on the screen, on the second screen if you prefer. So you can always have your journal off to the side, or you can have your, your character sheet off to the side. Sometimes there are some things that don't quite work with um, updating things here that don't fit through to the canvas, but um, either way, it normally works quite well. And if you, if you need to, you can pop it back in. So that's what Popout does, very useful. Quick insert is a search function, essentially. So for example, I said I wanted to have a wolf here on the scene. So I do control and space, you get this little index. I just put in wolf. And it will look through now this functionality, all the different items and general entries and so on. We'll find a wolf here. You can either click on here to open the character sheet, or I can just drag the wolf onto the background. And now I've got a wolf in the scene. That works with general entries and with items and I think roll tables. So for example, if I wanted to do a roll table for what are they called? The character creation. Or class. Now if I wanted to have the class table, there you go. You can also roll straight from here. Class. And I will tell you. Book and burger. Barroa. Somebody who lives in a barra. Yeah? So very useful. That's what I use for uh, that for. And now I closed it again. So manage my yields. Um, I would also use simple calendar just to have a calendar. It's off on the left under general notes. You get the simple calendar thing, and you can basically set the date. You can say, okay, it's not no, it's the wrong date. Setting here. Um, there are various calendars reconfigured. Luckily, yeah and uses the right calendar. Otherwise, some systems have got their own. Um, quick setup, you can say Gregorian. Um, yeah, but it's not 2023. It is 1873. Oh, yeah. I think I thought you could enter that. Yeah. 1839, even. Oh. Let me say today is that date. Save. And now you've got 1839. Yeah. You can use this. You can have this in this view. You can also add, you can see the moon phases, which is quite cool. And then you can add calendar notes to it as well um, up here. So you could say, on the new moon, the werewolf will come. Werewolf will come. Yeah. And then you can say, okay, that repeats every month or every four weeks. You can link pages to it, or you can just enter something. And you can also share this. Yeah, who can view game master or players? Um, so if you want to have a sort of a log of what happened when, or a reminder that this is supposed to happen at some point as you move through the calendar here. Sorry, not there. Day. Um, move forward a day there. You can then say, all right, now it's happened. Um, a lot of the basin things have a countdown, so you could, in theory, use that for the countdown. But it's just nice to be able to pull out a calendar. Um, small time, if you switch that on, that's this little window here at the bottom. You want to move it, by the way, it's the bar at the bottom here you have to get grab. Yeah? And that basically just tells you what the time is. And you can advance it by 10 minutes or by an hour. And it shows you the night and day phase. So that's what small time is. Um, Sockerlib, again, is just an enabling library. Tidy UI settings is basically, if you go to configure settings here, uh, I don't actually know whether it changes anything these days, but it tidied up these settings. They used to be in one long list. Let me just disable this. Um, yeah, have a quick reload. Go in here. Configure settings looks the same, so I don't think it does anything anymore. Yeah, they've enabled this already. So the last one I had is the Year Zero Combat. And while I'm here, this is the Year Zero Engine Combat. Um, that has a lot of really good uh, functionality. So it tracks slow and fast actions. If you don't need it, you can take it off. But for some games, you need it, like Forbidden Lands. Um, you can do things like duplicate combat and sort of extra speed. Yeah, which in base they sometimes do. And then you have to know what the speed attribute is. Um, if you're not sure, you can always ask on Discord. People 
we'll work it out very quickly. We'll tell you what the key is. But for me, the most important thing is this initiative deck. So if for a card-based initiative, we install or enable this module here, it will create a deck. It will create a discard file, and an initiative deck, and the base initiative. You can specify which one it uses. This one is a system neutral one. It just looks gray, basically. But let's use the basin. You can open this up, and this is a little trick you have to pay attention to. Um, and to get this initiative deck cryptic code up here, what you do is in the deck you click on that compendium mic. Click on it once, that will copy the code into your clipboard. Put it in here. Control V. Paste it in. Save changes. And if I now have my hunter here, put him in combat. Combat. You can see on the combat tracker. I can now draw all initiative, or I can draw just the NPCs, or I've got this reset initiative, um, link it to scene or not, reset initiative deck, you've got the things up here. But if I just draw it, it will now create a card. This is not the official design, if you like, of the card pack that came with Mason. I think I've got that here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I do. Looks like that, the official one. Um, or the number five. Put them in sleeves in case you're wondering why they're blue around the edge. Yeah, as you can see, it's not quite the same, but very, very similar in style. Um, the official look is, however, included. I'm just going to show you how to, how to do that with one card. Um, but yeah, that's basically what it does. It gives you this here, and then you can select it, and you can work with it without having to use the built-in card functionality. Um, so very useful. <laughs> If you wanted to have the real look cards here, you can go into this deck setup and you can replace any of these icons. You can go to edit. Let's use number one. Then you go to card faces and here you can browse to where you want to be. Yeah, what, what card deck you want. And if you look at vase and assets, you need to go up a couple all the way to modules. Then we find ways and core rules. Assets again, parts, and then you get, you'll see if you go to picture here, you get two versions of it. You either get the square ones if you prefer them, initiative tokens or icons he calls them, or you can have the cards as they are. And we set number one to be. So let's say I want the card. Click on there, one PNG, select file. It has now replaced. I save it. The one here with a different design. And if you want to do that for all of them, what I would recommend is you just go in here again, copy this path, select it, control C, and go to whatever, number two. Paste it. And then in the file name, we just write two. That's much, much quicker than clicking through all the different levels. Yeah? So. That is now basically, that's how you could replace the whole basin deck if you wanted to. Um, a word of advice, if you do this and there's a new system update coming out and you re-import it, it might overwrite it. So if you really want to do that, I would say you create your own deck, copy this one, a duplicate, and then you say, okay, I'm going to replace this as basin deck. Original, whatever you want to call it, like the real cards. And then you've created your own card stack and it will not be overwritten. Um, but I'm really getting into the, into the undergrowth now here, into the brush with all the different detail. So, um, if you wanted to create a character, let's just have a look because I'm not quite sure how he's done this, but I'm sure you'll tell us. You play a character. You play a character. You get the intro, you get all this personality, creating your character, all the steps. And you can see here these tables um, are beautifully rendered. I think this is a really stunning looking system. Um, and you get all the hyperlinks. But if I wanted to do the life path, we have got it here under archetypes, life paths. The quickest way of a method of creating is a default one. You can go to the life path, click on here, and then you get all the background tables, hopefully. Yeah. So if you have this, then open while you create your character. 
Um, you can basically work from this sheet, and whenever you see a table, you've got this little icon here, class. Let me go to the chat. And you can roll on them. So you then say, okay, uh, he's a Baroa. Now what you should be able to do, and would be really cool, I'm not sure whether you can, is to just drag and drop these onto the character sheets, but I think that doesn't work on this one. But you can copy and paste the text. Yeah, so for example, you're a worker and you want the upbringing, uh, you roll it, and you say, okay, send away, you can click on here, and I will tell you what that means. And then you can copy this into your character sheet. Now in Forbidden Lands, there's actually a real character generator. Let me just check, has it gone? Because I haven't played this for a while. No, it doesn't look like it. Right. So that's how you would do that. Um, right, I think... Oh yes, when I've got this, once I've got this, and you save, I oh, want icons, uh, items, sorry. You say, oh, I've got talents, this person has got a loyal servant, and they, they've got... Um... Uh, a chair, now that doesn't make sense. Walking stick, whip, why not? And drag and drop things across. And you should be able to. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is not working. It works with items. Oh, maybe because I was on the wrong. Yeah, it just puts it under combat, not gear. So I could have a guard dog and some aquavit. And um, you can then basically populate your character sheet just like that. So it does work, sorry. Combat here, talent goes here. Um, that makes it a lot quicker, especially if you say I wanted the talent of, uh, let's say, servants. I want robust. You use the quick insert from earlier. Robust, go here, rob. And there you go. Yeah, so if you know from the, from the write-up, the table of what talents you're choosing, use the quick insert to very, very quickly populate your, your character sheet. Of course, you need to share these items with your players, otherwise they will not be able to find them, nor will they be able to drag them across. So make sure you do that. Um, right, I think that was pretty in-depth for a quick overview. How long was it now? Um, oh, the UI on, on Prism Studio has changed so much. Tiny now. I'll actually see. Oh, that's 30 minutes, 32 minutes. If you have any more questions, let me know. But I hope this will be useful in getting you guys started on this excellent game that is Basin. Um, it really is always popular when I run it. People love it. The books are great. The foundry system works really well. Um, so you're on to a winner with it if you, if you invest a bit of time in it. So. I'll see you maybe next time when I do another system. Um, but I've got lots of stuff like this on my on my YouTube channel. Go and check it out. Yeah, in the different playlists. You're here already, otherwise you wouldn't be seeing this video. But yeah. Dig through it. There's actual plays, there are explanations, the actual place where I use this sort of system. Um, so I hope that you find lots of good content for you. Yes.